Hello, I'm Pano Koskola, a customer solutions architect here at Nevius. I'm here to tell you about our latest release, Managed Service for PostgreSQL. You probably don't need me to tell you what Postgres is, but in short, it's a well-known open source SQL database that had its initial release already almost 30 years ago. For ML and AI, Postgres has become probably the standard choice for many. We will link a longer read about the benefits of using Postgres in the context of ML, but as an object relational database, it allows the definition of complex data types while maintaining a strict SQL compliance. This, combined with a broad range of extensions, makes it a compelling choice for multiple use cases. Our managed service simplifies the deployment and administration of Postgres databases with out-of-the-box features for automated backups, high availability, observability, resource provisioning, and regular software updates. On top of that, we have a wide range of pre-installed extensions ready to be enabled. So, let's get started with how to deploy a cluster on our web console. So, here we are on the web console. On the left-hand side here, you can see a bunch of our services. From there, let's select Manage PostgreSQL. And then let's select Create Cluster. Then let's give a name to our cluster. We can just use Test Cluster for the, our purpose here. We don't really need to give a description. Right now, we only support version 16. We highly recommend selecting a pooling mode. So let's go with Transaction. We don't need to specify really a pool size here for this demo. And because we're going to access this from my laptop, let's select public and private for the access here. For network, we're not going to do anything fancy. So let's just use the default network. For this demo, we're not going to really need much resources. So we can keep the defaults in here. But I do want to show some of the multi-host capabilities here, especially in the monitoring side. So let's select three hosts. Then let's give a name to our database, a username, then a password. Then let's repeat that password. Great. Our service creates a backup each day. And here you can specify at which time that backup is taken. This is in UTC zero. So of course, plan that according to your workload and your time of day and wherever you might be. Then in the retention period here, you can specify how long uh, each backup is retained. Then we can just select create cluster and start provisioning. Great. Now we have a test cluster that's in provisioning state. Let's wait for a while and then let's come back here once that cluster has been provisioned. Great. Now that the cluster has been provisioned, we can go in and have a deeper look. On the first tab here, we can see all the basic general information. On the top, we can get instructions on how to connect to the cluster. Or we can copy the different endpoints of the cluster. On the monitoring page, we can see a number of metrics from the cluster. By going to the Postgres group here, we can see the, all the metrics from the different instances. Or we can go in and check the metrics of a specific instance. On the backup page, we can select, select a specific backup to restore to. And on the settings page, we can say change the pooling mode. We can change the access mode from a public and private back to only private. Uh, we can change the preset of the, the hosts. We can increase the number of hosts. We can change the password or we can change some of the additional parameters. Or we can go in and delete the whole cluster. Next, let's connect to the database. Let's start by going to the connection instructions here. Now there are uh, some dependencies that you might have to install before connecting to the database, but you can find instructions on how to do that with the full guide here. Let's start by installing a certificate. 
just copy the command there. And with that, we have it downloaded the certificate. And next, let's copy the connection command. Like that. Then let's write our password. And with that, we have connected to the database. Now, I mentioned previously that there are a number of extensions available. To find a full list of those in the database itself, we can use the following command. Select all from PG available extensions. With that, we get the full list. Now, to enable a specific one, all we need to do is to write create extension. And let's use PG vector as an example. So create extension vector. And with that, that specific extension has been enabled in this database. Thank you for watching this quick introduction to our managed service for PostgreSQL. Please take a look at the links below for more details about the service.